typical positioning is where we just line things up. So as we wish, we would see it in cars and trains and all these sorts of things. And we are just lining things up. I'm going to show you briefly with my car and train, just so I can show you an example of what I see a lot. So if, for example, I can line something up, and these are all cars or all trains, if I can come in and I can go, I'm going to take that one and leave it here, if the child doesn't get anxious or stressed out by that, then we can see that they're developing this skill typically. But some children that I've worked with who are specifically on the spectrum or they've come from trauma, so they've come from anxiety-based background or stressed, stressful background, me moving this object out of alignment can cause them anxiety and stress and you'll see them elevate. They'll start to try and snatch at that toy to quickly get it back into position. They'll be distracted and staring at me until I put that back into position. That's when we can start to see that this lining things up or positioning, the play schema is called, is becoming a concern. It's becoming something we need to look at and address rather than just thinking that it's a typical play schema progression. So what I tend to do is I don't just go up to a child and move them all around. <laughs> I, that, that would be horrible. What I do instead is I make my own line and I encourage them to wreck my line. So I'll have a line of my people. And as you can see, this would annoy some people too on the spectrum because they're not in size order. They'd love for them to be in size order. I'd also be a bit annoying and I'd be missing one. So there'd be an obvious gap there that would um, make them want to fix this as well. I might also make it not straight. So then they're going to want to try and fix it and, and line it up and position it. But it's, it, they're trying to help my line. I'm not going in and disrupting their process. I'm setting it up next to them and they might want to try and just help me either line mine up or also just deal with that this isn't perfect and this is out of, out of order and out of sort. We, of course, will start to do another activity. So I might come in and go, okay, well, now I'm going to add a challenge where we're still lining things up, but I'd like to add in a little bit of resilience. So they want to, I want them to line things up. We enjoy lining things up, so I don't take away the need to line things up, but I'm adding in a bit of problem solving and a bit of error so that when my people drop, we're working on that resilience. It's okay. We're going to try again. Let's try again. It's fine. Don't worry. All those real prompting. It's okay. I can see that you're frustrated. We're going to try it again. I'll help you. I'm here. All those words that help to comfort each child. We then start to do it again and then the people drop and we do it again. So we are progressing it. We're not taking away their desire to line things up. We're just trying to progress it. We're trying to make it not so rigid and not so set for them. I need them to be a little bit flexible in these moments because when we go to school, another child could easily just turn that car around out of being a little bit cheeky because that's what humans can do sometimes. And I don't want this to impact them long term. I want them to be able to cope with this. And yes, of course, most of them will want to fix it and work it out and sort it out. But it may not get to the extreme of frustration and meltdown as it might have at the start. So when we're positioning, this is a very typical part of our development. When it becomes a concern is when it's way too stressful for me to go in and, and change it up. You'll be able to see the difference now when you try it. Can you go in and, and change it up and sort it out? One example that I recently worked with was a young girl who she lined all of her toys up and her friend kept wanting to have a turn of one of them. And you could see her escalating and, and her, her stress was escalating we in that moment wasn't a great time to have a teaching moment because she was already stressed. What I did is I distracted her away to another activity and then we lined them up at another time when a child wasn't trying to take that turn. If I had have kept pushing her in that moment to, you're okay, it's okay, there's another little person becoming a variable in that situation. Another little person is elevating her stress. So compared to us working one-on-one -on -one and I can comfort her one-on-one, -on -one, try not to do it when there's lots of people and other children around if you can. It's in these moments we might like to just distract from this process and we might like to bring out our other play schemas such as 
Yeah, let's wrap up the train. Let's put the train underneath the cup so you can sort of see I'm not trying to solve the lining up challenge at the moment because there's lots of kids around that's really busy. We'll just try and distract and come back to that at a more quieter time or that might be an activity that we encourage the child to do with their family member, with their occupational therapist, exercise physiologist, etc. So just a little trick of the trade <laughs> for you to know. I pick when I'm going to intervene and have an intervention intervention moment. It's, it's not all the time because if we do it when they're stressed, we're just going to escalate. All of us will become escalated. We want to do it when, it's, when they're relaxed and, and they're in what we call the green zone. So that's positioning for you. Another great activity for positioning is dominoes. So lining up dominoes is really fun because you need that structure for lining up dominoes. But then having the resilience of when we knock all the dominoes down that the children can cope with that and manage them being knocked down. Another activity is also lacing. So when we lace beads together, we're developing that skill of positioning. So you can always enjoy the positioning play scheme of it using different resources. So we're not always stuck lining up cars and trains.